This is Michael Humphrey one more time. In the podcast and first video, I mentioned three ways to think about listening for story, understanding, strategy, and practice. In this video, I want to talk about practice. That's the reason I developed the story trust. So what is it? The story trust is the way to ensure that listening is emphasized, even above any particular story itself. We do that by placing each person in charge of another person's narrative. You will be the trustee of somebody's story, which means at the end of the experience, you will tell their story back to them. A big part of the experience is driven by questions. Each session is organized by a starting question, and the story listeners will follow up with the kinds of questions we talked about in the strategy video. Seek the people, the places, the actions, and the times that naturally flow from the starting question. I will talk a little bit more about the starting question in a moment. Everyone in the group will be given the exact same amount of time to answer the questions. One person will be the timer, and when the clock strikes zero, it is time to stop. If the clock is not struck zero and the answer is finished, do not stop. Sit in the silence. Silence is a powerful storytelling tool. A session is made up of everyone answering the same question in their own way. So why a starting question for each session? I call them story spiles after the taps tapped into a maple tree. With the right tap and some patience, spiles can render the magic of a tree's essence. And that's exactly what story spiles are meant to do as well. These are questions intended to think about the roots of your lives, how and why your leaves grew, what really matters. But the questions are not sacred. The interactions, the listening that leads out of them, is the true magic of a story trust. So be ready to ask follow-ups, any that interest you. There's no right or wrong. Just be present, be curious, and listen along. Most of the time, you are listening. But it is also very important to tell, so everyone gets to practice. When you get a question, don't worry about telling a story. Just answer the question. Ramble. Think for a minute. Connect dots. Just get as much out as you can and your listeners can get out of you. You don't have to reveal anything that makes you uncomfortable, but know that the word trust is sacred here. Whatever any of you say is meant to stay in the room and treated without judgment. We follow the same rules as any other trust like this. Only plans of violence or self-harm would be reported. Everything else is confidential. In a group of three, for instance, you will listen twice as much as you tell. That's a lot of practice. Listen for those horizontal and vertical elements. Dive into the richness of the story and let your curiosity move you further into the narrative world. Everyone in the group not telling can take notes or ask questions. When the trustees tell her is speaking, pay even closer attention. But everyone can help each other here. I cannot stress this enough. Story listeners are most powerful when they reflect the storyteller's story back to them. I don't mean mimic, but to show the teller their story through a new lens. That lens should be generous, non-judgmental, curious, empathetic, and ultimately kind. I have developed five questions myself, but sometimes time will not permit all of them. So it could be three, four, or five. When everyone has answered the agreed upon number of questions, then the listeners become tellers. Telling someone their own story can be a very emotional experience. And I encourage all listeners to choose a way to retell the story in their own way. You can write a letter, a song, a story, of course, make a video, put together an arrangement from your garden, make a scrapbook. It's limitless. All that matters is that it reflects the story you heard. Like everything else, you will be given a time limit so everyone's story can be heard. You should also leave some time for the teller and trustee to talk and reflect on the story. Did the teller recognize your story? Discuss it and think about how the listening worked. At the end, whatever creation is made to tell the story belongs to the teller, not the listener. It is a gift we give to each other that belongs to no one but those whose lives were told. I'm excited to have this experience with you.